Hello and welcome back to another one of Mr. Burson's video tutorials. This tutorial is Inventor 07 Mirror. To get started today, as always, we're going to start with a 2D sketch. This one we're going to have a little bit of fun with, where you're going to be making a car. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the mirror tool once in this video. Obviously, you can go over it again if you need to. Um, the point of this video, though, is that ultimately you uh, take the mirror tool and you're able to use it yourself, um, specifically for my students and my assignment. Uh, once I show you how to use the mirror tool once, I need you to use it at least two more times. But here we go. Let's start with a 2D sketch as always. Uh, this time around, I'm going to start on the right plane. That's what I'm going to prefer to do because I'm going to be making a vehicle. It doesn't matter what plane that you start on. It's just a personal preference of mine. I'm going to be using the line tool quite a bit here, and I'm going to be doing quite a bit of dimensioning, and I'll talk about why here in a moment. But essentially, I'm going to be making the side profile of a car. All right, and you're, you're going to see very quickly what I mean here. And this car is not going to be anything special. Um, it's just kind of a... Uh, basic outline of a vehicle. Now, I'm going to be making it pretty big as I want to imagine that I'm making this like a model or that, uh, you know, it just makes it a little bit easier if I am making all of my, um, all of my, uh, lines nice and big so that I know what I'm dealing, you know, if I want to make small details later, I'm not talking about, oh, I need to make this 0.1 inches. You know, I instead I can say that I want to make it a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, something where it's a very standard unit of measurement versus saying 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, something like that. So all I'm doing here, again, is I'm just making that basic outline of the vehicle. Uh, based on everything that I just made, I did intend for this to be the front of the vehicle, but honestly, it looks a lot better if this is the front of my vehicle now, so that's kind of funny. Um, but I think this will be the front of my vehicle, this will be the rear of my vehicle over here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be doing a lot of dimension, and, and uh, to talk a little bit about why, if I want to make a change later and I decide, ooh, you know, I don't really like how close something is, or I really don't like how far something is, I'll make an example during this video, but it is important to dimension all of that out so that I don't have to worry about that being an issue later. But a lot of this, uh, a lot of the next part of this video is going to be a lot of dimensioning. You can watch and you can follow along if you would like to, but you don't have to make your car the exact same dimensions that I do, all right? But we'll start uh, up here at the front. I'm just going to kind of work one line at a time. And just going over my head, I want that to be two inches. That very first dimension that you change, by the way, will change the entire car. After that, it's going to be very, um, it's going to be on a per line basis. I think I've gone over this in the past. I do want to change this height from the top, uh, top point to the bottom point. I want to change that height specifically. But if I uh, did not, if I did not want to do something like that, instead I could click again on this line and change this distance right here, where it's uh, uh, more like it's changing the exact length of that line. But that's not what I want to do. So I hit Escape, click my dimension tool again. We'll say that this is two point seven five. Say that this line right here, we'll call it at 10 exactly. Say that from top to bottom, we'll just call that 5.75. It's close enough. Call this up here at, call it at 20. Call this, oh, I hit cancel because it says that I already have that dimensioned. That is probably dimensioned already because of this one over here. So that makes that easy. Call this one at 11.5. Not 11.56. Tap my six key on accident. Dimension this right here to be, we'll do three exactly. And this right here is probably already done. It is. Let's keep going. Uh, we'll go to this line right here. We'll call that at 1.5. We'll call top to bottom here at one, uh, we'll do 2.5. Distance here at four. And again, 2.5, that's already secured in place. And I can tell that those are already done dimensions because if this says 2.500, I know that it's already attached to this one. And if I try, it says adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. And so I don't really need to do that. We'll match these exactly 2.5 and 4 over here. So we'll need to do 4. And well, okay, so that's already that's already settled. 
and we'll do a dimension of we'll do two and a half up here yep two and a half sounds good okay last thing that i want to do you may have noticed that these wheel wells don't really look the same and i there is an easy way to fix that that is by fixing the angle of th between these two lines so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take my dimension tool and i'm going to click on this line right here and i'm going to click on this upper line right here i'm going to define this at 120 exactly i'm going to do this with both of these and what you're going to find then is those lines they all turn black you know mine are going from purplish blue to black that shows me that those are fully constrained i can do this with this line up here as well i'm not really adjusting these angles too much i really just want to again get those angles set in stone set in place that way they look good We'll do 120 there, and then I think that's already defined. Uh, what part of this? So now I'm curious myself. I don't really know why this line is still purple. Um, that means that something about this line is still movable. Ah, you know what I bet it is? I bet it's this angle right back here. Which will also, well, we'll define this one at 110. Yeah, I like that. And now you can see everything has just turned black. Excellent. That is. That means that everything has been uh, put in place. So it says that I can't do 120 degrees there, um, but this line and this angle doesn't quite look like 120 degrees, and I was right. We'll change that to 120, and that's all there is to it. None of my lines are that blue color anymore, meaning that my entire car has been fully dimensioned. And again, I'll go over an example of why we want to do this in just a moment. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit finish on my sketch. I'm going to hit my home button so that way I can see the entire vehicle. And then I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to flip the direction. That's just for my sake. You don't have to flip the direction on yours. Let's try 12 inches to start with. That looks a little thin still. 15 inches. 16 inches. Okay, 16 inches. I like that. That is looking like a car. All right. Very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some details to this car. Now, you have the option of adding as many details as you want. You can add windows, you can add wheels, you can add headlights. I'm going to add a set of headlights on the front of this vehicle. You can choose what you want to do there. The big thing that I want you to know is you can make this car as detailed as you would like. You can detail the exterior of it, or you can go all out and you can cut out the inside of it and detail the interior, the seats, the dashboard, the steering wheel, all sorts of stuff. But I'm just going to start simple today. I want to just detail the outside of it, and I'm just going to detail the headlights on the front, which is a great way to show you how to use mirror, because a lot of features on a vehicle are mirrored across uh, you know, if I make it on this side, headlights are going to be on both sides. You're going to have windows on both sides. You're going to have a rear view mirror on both sides. You're going to have so many features that are on both sides of the vehicle. That mirror is a fantastic tool for uh, this exact kind of modeling. Let's start on the front of my vehicle. I want to make headlights on this panel right here, but I don't want to start a sketch on this panel. And the reason being is because if I start a sketch on this panel, my headlights are going to be, well, let me orient this to the right, right? My headlights are going to be sticking up and out like this, like my mouse is showing right now. And I want them sticking straight out of the vehicle. A great way to do that is by just using this straight plane that I already have here. So let's go ahead, click on that plane, click Start 2D Sketch. And then I'm going to just add two very simple circles, all right? Put that away. Um, and so I'm going to start two very simple circles. I'm going to make one larger than the other. I'm going to make the outside one a little bit bigger than the inside one. I'm going to use my dimension tool going to say that I want this one to be 1.25 inches. I'm going to say that I want this one to be 1.75 inches, so it's very distinctly bigger. We'll say that I want the distance between the two circles. I clicked on the middle point to do that at 1.75. And we'll say that I want the distance from the edge to be, we'll say one exactly would work. And then I say I want the distance from the top to be, uh, we'll do 1.25. And I can see that this circle didn't adjust with it, and I really don't want that to be like that. So what I can do, I believe I can use uh, one of two different uh, one of two different uh, constraints here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit simple for myself. I'm going to put a line right here horizontal. 
All right? And I don't really need to do anything else from this line with this line other than make sure that it is uh, dimensioned properly. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm, I'm going to use coincident constraint and I'm going to click between this point and this line. And now those two are constrained and you can see that that line turned black. So now that I've done that, I can click on the dot of this circle, the dot of this line, and there we go. We have ourselves a set of headlights on the front of my car, fully dimensioned out and I hit finish sketch, okay? Now I'm going to use my extrude tool. I'm going to click on both of my headlights, all right? Now this looks fine right now, but I wanna go over a little bit. I don't want to keep it like this. I'm going to use another tool right now, another unique tool, because mirror is a really simple tool once we get right down to it. So it's good to show off some other, um, some other things that we can do to make our model top notch. Right now, what we are doing is called a blind extrusion, a blind extrusion. What a blind extrusion means is that when I'm extruding this uh, headlight, I'm just saying, I want you to go this amount of distance. I want you to go 16 inches. When in reality, I don't need it to go 16 inches into the back here, right? This is a lot of really weird, useless space back here that I'm saying, hey, can you go all the way back here? when I know that really I just need it to go up to the front of this vehicle. So what I'm going to do here is instead of this distance A where it says 16 inches, I'm going to go over here and there's a couple different options that I have here. I can do two next, two, or through all. Now through all sounds pretty obvious. Through all means it would go through this entire vehicle and it would go all the way to the end of it. What I want is the option called two. Now, when I click on two, you'll notice that that distance disappears and that my extrusion disappears. And what I can do now is I can click on this front, <clears throat> the front of my vehicle here. And when I do now, the only thing that's being extruded is all that I need. And it's automatically setting that angle for me as well. And you can see that it automatically sets that distance. And that is perfect. That is exactly what I want. And I want to hit OK to finish that up. And there we go. I have a set of headlights. Now, of course, the, the, the meat of this entire video, how do we use the mirror tool, okay? So the mirror tool, pretty simple at the end of the day. You're going to love this, okay? So I'm going to click on one side of my vehicle. I'm going to use shift and middle mouse to pivot around to the other side of my vehicle. And while pressing and holding shift, I'm going to click on the other side of my vehicle, okay? So both sides of my vehicle are selected. And this is where Inventor is super nice and super smart. This plane tool up here, I don't even have to click the down arrow on it. I'm just going to click this big plane up here. Don't click the down arrow. Click this button right here, and our job is finished. What that has done is it has created a work plane right in the middle of our vehicle. And if you think about a mirror, right, thinking about a mirror, um, that mirror right a mirror if you are standing a certain distance away from a mirror then your reflection is going to be that distance away if you move closer to the mirror then your reflection moves closer to the mirror as well so with these headlights being this distance away from the mirror watch what happens i'm going to go up here and i'm going to look through and i'm going to find this one under pattern called mirror click on mirror it's going to ask me for the features that i want to mirror and you can see that i can highlight the car or I can highlight these headlights. I'm going to click on the headlights. I'm going to click on the button for mirror plane, and then I'm going to click on the mirror plane. And you can see that those headlights copy over here to the other side, and I hit OK. And that's really all there is to it. That's all there is to mirror. Now, say that later on I'm working on this vehicle and I decide, hmm, I've made this vehicle a little bit too long, okay? What I can do is I can actually go into Extrusion 4, which was my vehicle. I'm going to double-click on Sketch 5, and I decide, you know what? I'm not really happy with how long this car is. I'm going to change this to 9 inches, and I'm going to hit the check mark on that. Now, that moved the whole front of the vehicle back. Here's the part that I want you to note. By dimensioning all of this out, by making sure that all of this was, was dimensioned before I started making the headlights, you'll love what happens when I hit Finish Sketch, okay? When I hit Finish... My headlights and everything else automatically move back with, with my, my entire car. 
want you to imagine that I, I left that 16 inches on, and if I shorten that car to something that's less than 16 inches, suddenly these headlights are going to be sticking out the back. Now, maybe that's not too bad, you know, I also need rear lights as well, but maybe I don't want the rear lights to look the same as the front lights. That's just an example of why it's important to dimension everything out. Okay. I've talked for quite enough time. The mirror tool, very easy to use. Click on mirror, you click on your features, and then you click on whichever mirror plane you want to use, and it's easy enough to create a mirror plane between the two halves of a vehicle. Take a look at Canvas for the rest of your instructions for this assignment. Otherwise, that is all I have for you today. Hope you have a good day.